Let's take a look at those banned cards, Andrew, and this is really different than what we've seen before. Yeah, no, the Miner makes a lot of sense. You see the Miner working into a lot of decks and obviously just being able to get damage directly on the tower. The Mortar, on the other hand, is kind of surprising because it's not really a card you find as a dominant force in 2v2. However, Immortals did or, excuse me, Immortals were the first team to bust out the Double Mortar this year. They've used it a couple times since then, so maybe Thunderstruck and Hazard just do not want to deal with that. So those two cards inactive for this entire best of three set. A very important best of three. You feel like this one is, a, is the set that Immortals needs to get in with Buffmack being so dangerous in that head-to-head -head play. So these squads ready to do battle. You know exactly who's going to come out. AC and RF for Immortals. Their record six and five in sets on the season. Thunderstruck at five and three, and Hazard at four and four, coming out for Energy. And these have been the duos for Immortals the entire season. And for Energy, this seems to be their strongest pair. Also leaves more options available as they move farther through our sets. It's definitely the pair they've settled on. It's been an up and down run for these two as a duo three and three together to end out this season. So both squads leaking Alexa here, maybe looking for something heavier today. Maybe some beatdown could be taking to the skies as Balloon might be effective in the sense of not having Tornado. Well, Miner and Mortar off the table. Balloon's been really big for Immortals in 2v2. They are six and two this season with Balloon decks. So you wonder if Hazard and Thunderstruck might be prepared for something like that. It's been the most successful go-to for Crap and RF in the fall. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe even seeing some classic Lava Loon from Immortals today. But if I'm Energy, I am thinking to go Balloon. You say that they're six and two. They've been playing it quite a bit and having a lot of success. So I'd be looking for something in the skies. Hazard and Thunderstruck have played quite a bit of Ram Rider together, four and four overall with Ram Rider decks. And this is where you wonder if experience on the big stage comes into play. Not that Hazard and Thunderstruck haven't had it, but AC and RF have been on the biggest stage in World Finals, WCG. They've been in playoffs both years that they've competed or in both seasons they've competed prior. It, it does feel like they have a bit of an edge in that sense, but Hazard's never really been shy from the camera and Thunderstruck <laughs> since day one has always been a fan. And so after two minutes of waiting it out, which is so rare for 2v2, both players get really, really aggressive. Yeah, and a very nice uh, high magic archer there to get some chip damage in early. Ice Spirit and Witch clean it off the board. Very similar looks so far from these two squads. A lot of Dark Prince, a lot of Witch, Baby Dragon. Yeah, you start to think. When you see these cards, you got to start thinking Graveyard. And now with Poison out of cycle, you'll see if Energy decides to go aggressive or kind of hang tight for a little bit. But we are already into overtime the next 20 seconds. Second Witch down, a lot of spell value at the bridge for Energy. And it is Graveyard. We'll see how this fares for Immortals. They are two and four with Graveyard decks this season in 2v2. And a nice freeze there from Energy to get those Baby Dragons right up on the tower, tanking for those Skeletons. Down under 1,000 HP. We are in Sudden Death Overtime. AC and RF do finally take a little bit of damage in their left-hand tower, but this Graveyard not getting a ton done for Energy. And Hazard and Thunderstruck having to use that Tornado down low to keep the Giant Skeleton off. They just were not able to get anything across the river. Immortals was looking for it. They dropped a giant skeleton right up front, and this should be an easy game one for Immortals. It was a very nice tornado at the end just to guarantee that splash damage on tower, and AC and RF make that first game look easy. Yeah, I mean, you, you weren't 100% sure what the win condition was, but we were both pretty sure, and you have to think that's exactly what these four players were thinking. AC and RF just took advantage. They went for it, dropping a very high giant skeleton, making sure nothing could cross the river to tank. And that is why energy fell behind, as they were not able to keep tanks away from that graveyard. And of course, those baby dragons coming in, doing work for Immortals. Big time game number one win for Immortals. A lot more games to win to have a shot at World Finals, but that first step might be the most important. Yeah, they've only won three King of the Hills so far. So if they drop the 2v2 set, they have to have an 
uncharacteristically strong second set in order to push to that third and final. So 2v2 does feel like it must go to the boys in blue if they want to end on top in this match. You're right, Andrew. It does feel like this set holds more weight for Immortals, and it might be because they've struggled in King of the Hill, and it might be because they know that if they don't win this one, they have to beat Buffmac at least three times, and that's a hard out for anybody. Yeah, it's been really interesting for Immortals, just to remind you of something we said before. They have not won a match this season where they have not taken the 2v2. Now, they've won the 2v2 set and lost the match, but they've yet to win a match without taking this first set. So Dark Goblins on both sides for Immortals. Maybe expecting Graveyard again from their opponents and knowing Dark Goblins very, very helpful. Yeah, Immortals did a great job last game with their Magic Archer being played behind King Tower and Dark Goblin a little faster, a little cheaper. Could be a great Graveyard cleanup. Ram Rider does not get a connection, so Energy going back to their favorite deck or at least favorite archetype for 2v2. And Immortals busting out the balloon, something they've had a lot of success with this season. And it looks like it's going to go right on through, maybe a NATO late. There it is. Both teams going their 2v2 comfort style, at least, for game number two. Now, I recognize in 1v1, you, you take the bomb drop to activate the King Tower. And it's something you can usually recover from and defend against pretty firmly for the rest of your game. but. In 2v2 with the amount of spell damage, even taking just one bomb drop can really be devastating and kind of set you behind because you see right there, Immortal's going to start piling it on with spell value. Yeah, suddenly down to almost 1,000 HP for that right-hand tower, and that feels like a very difficult hole to climb out from for energy. Yeah, the energy relying on Ram Riders to connect and Snowball Log, Guards, a lot of units to clog up the lane for Immortals, but Dark Goblin. Dark Goblin, well, that was a beautiful zap by Energy, recognizing that they could get the Dark Goblin off the board for Immortals and sneak in a couple shots on their own. Suddenly, they've made it much closer than it felt about 30 seconds ago. Some crazy numbers here. This is going to be Hazard's 25th game, or excuse me, Thunderstruck's 25th game in 2v2 ever, but Hazard now on his 85th, and Awcrap and RF, their 89th 2v2 game. They have so, played quite a lot together. Freeze comes in, but Balloon cannot sneak by. Still getting some nice spell value in. They're going to take that every single time with the Witch being as powerful as she is, getting her off the board with those two spells and tower damage. Easy. High Inferno Tower gets its value. Energy trying to get back in it with spell damage. They've made things very close. Ram Rider down. And a very nice Fisherman pull. Get that Mega Knight away, but might actually help tank for this balloon. Does not quite get in front of the balloon. Ram Rider down. Energy's doing a good job dealing with these freezes. Yeah, that is a very nice freeze from Immortals. They will get death damage, but no drop. Down to 510 right hand side for energy, 888 for Immortals. And Immortals Very close. needs to keep up the pressure. There you go, another balloon right at the river. They cannot allow energy to play a nice defense and turn a huge, huge counter push in. And not able to get death damage this time is Immortals. Energy now looking to counter push 748 with a good opportunity to do some damage here. Loading up at the bridge, Ram Rider down into the rage. Snowball trying to push it back and pretty low elixir in the hands of Immortals. A very nicely timed log should save the day. Wow, very, very well played. That's teamwork. And now Immortals taking the chance to regroup. They don't want to overextend themselves already low on elixir. Yeah, only up by 238 HP and not enough spell power to spell cycle them out. And now Mega Knight down right into a P.E.K.K.A. They do not have that Mega Knight for Ram Rider anymore. Ram Rider in, Inferno Tower to the middle. Ram Rider doing a great job of blocking. So this battle at the river has been going on, but the spell value coming in for energy has really evened this up. And defensive freeze for Immortals. They have not been able to get spell damage on the other side, if we're talking about that as a key factor. And with that, energy oh, takes the lead. Up. 
Oh, that Mega Minion got so close with the Rage there, but only 275 remaining. They are within spell cycle range. Ram Rider down. Lumberjack takes it out. Log in. This balloon is going to be dangerous depending on the timing of this freeze. They just need to get a fireball in on Immortal's tower. There's a poison. That should do it. Freeze is in. Balloon makes a run for it, but Energy fires back a beautiful comeback by Hazard and Thunderstruck. A great, great job of managing the game, never letting those balloons get through after that initial drop. They did such a good job of waiting for the freeze, using that King Tower activation and playing so calm and patiently. Those poisons really added up over that time. There's a, a big momentum shift, Andrew, and Aw and RF couldn't get balloons on tower and couldn't have enough elixir to get spell damage on tower. And suddenly they began to fall behind, fall behind, fall behind, and energy just made a slight adjustment to their defense and played it beautifully. Yeah, negative elixir traits for immortals regularly on defense. Left Thunderstruck and Hazard in the driver's seat. So here we go, game number three. Immortals needs to make some adjustments after that really well-played game by Thunderstruck and Hazard. They did a good job of getting the counters to the Ram Rider out of cycle, especially that Mega Knight, and took a fantastic advantage. And here we are, one and one. One more game to decide this opening set. Yeah, Ram Riders were doing such a good job of clogging up the lane, creating offensive presence, and stopping those balloons from working their way towards Energy's Princess Tower and a very, very nice game number two. And Immortals looking very similar to last game. Wouldn't be entirely shocked if they ran that deck back, but Giant Skeleton certainly is a different wrinkle. And Ram Rider back out for Energy. And no matter how this game goes, it will be one of these two squads' last 2v2 appearance on the season. Giant Skeleton supported by Inferno Tower and would love to get Inferno Tower in range. Does a little bit of burn, not going to last long enough to deal with that Mega Knight and a nice poison from Energy. Yeah, Energy getting that poison value in early on, which was really a huge separating factor in that last game. Down to 1917 right hand side tower for Immortals. Untouched are the two towers of Energy. So Immortal's happy to just let this battle happen on Energy's side of the map. And you see Immortal switching to playing Witch High rather than behind Tower, not wanting to give that Fireball value that they know Energy wants to get for that Tower damage. Yeah, between the Fireball and the Poison, Energy is going to take that every single time. And Ram Rider does not connect. Energy. I was going to say, Energy happy to switch sides here. You see they've taken the lead on both towers, and now the left-hand side is lower than the right, which is what it felt like they were focusing on. And Ram Rider switches its attention off the balloon for a moment, but not quite long enough. Balloon drops early and high, and now a Dark Goblin getting across the board just out of range of Princess Tower will get damage on the left-hand side. Yeah, that last Ram Rider stun or slow on the balloon. It felt like the last snare was a, just a little bit too far away, but you saw the balloon just caught right in its tracks up at the river. And so far, Energy has been near perfect in this most important 2v2 game. Immortals giving a lot of spell value to Energy. You see it over and over again. That log does not take off the Witch. And now balloon down, they foist a zap out. We will see. This might be a big opportunity for Immortals to take some damage in. They freeze the Ram Rider, but there's going to be enough there to clog up the lane, stop the balloon between the Ram Rider snare and the Mega Minion. Energy doing such an excellent job clogging up the lane in the skies. Cannot believe that didn't get through, Andrew. It really felt like that balloon was going to get death damage, plus potentially an Energy playing really, really good defense. Maybe finally getting on the same page at this most important stage of the season. Yeah, and, and also the ability to just kind of cycle one card to the left to make it that much harder for a balloon push in the opposite lane for Immortals. They've, they're kind of stuck in this one lane on the right, and they have not been able to break through. 
giant skeleton down. So here you go, Immortals loading up again. And there you go, freeze in, fireball trying to clear some room. The tornado has just been a nightmare for Immortals. That with the Ram Rider, these balloons getting nowhere near tower. Yeah, it feels like after that last game, you saw how well Thunderstruck and Hazard played with the Ram Rider, how much it countered the balloon, which you are, if you're Immortals, it is technically your comfort deck now in 2v2. It feels like maybe a switch up would have been necessary. Well, you talk about those mind games, Andrew, wondered if maybe energy goes back to graveyard, so they go with this deck, turns out made the wrong call, and now just trying to find some way through. This Ram Rider gonna be on the giant skeleton side, so Balloon this time, man, a last second tornado. They are doing so well, you see AC and RF both not happy with the result. And the giant skeleton gonna get close, but not close enough, and that felt like quite a bit of wind being taken out of the sails of Immortals. And here we go, a freeze opening up an opportunity. Is the tornado back in cycle one more time? It is not, so death damage does get on tower, but a raged Ram Rider going opposite direction. It does not connect. Guards do their job. 15.43 to 9. Just 9.05. I was waiting for that log to hit. Really good log value for Hazard and Thunderstruck. Final 40 seconds. They are ahead by a mile. 5.69 on that left-hand side. Remember, it is always lowest single tower, so there's no draw here. Immortals has to push the pace, and Energy knows exactly where they're going. Yeah, I don't know if we need to see a double balloon pull or double balloon push or something out of Immortals, but they need to change up what they've been doing because this has not worked for five and a half minutes, and it'll be very hard-pressed to work now in the final 20 seconds. Giant Skeleton going left-hand lane, freeze on the right, and that's going to be good damage, but split across two different lanes. So now Immortals trying to load up into where the Giant Skeleton Bomb is going. Seven, six seconds left. They get a magic archer tower. in the tower, but the Ram Rider connects in the top right. And it looked like for a oh. moment, Immortals was going to be able to steal it. You see the left-hand side, Immortals got ahead, but that last second damage on the right-hand side saves it for energy. They take 2v2 and put Immortals in a very difficult position. They sold out on the left. A perfect Magic Archer looked like Immortals was going to steal it in those final seconds, but nothing there to catch the Ram Rider. No log, no snowball, and a charged up Ram Rider connects, and energy takes the 2v2 